So hello and welcome. My name is Steve Nabell and today I'm speaking with Terry Kirouac on Lightworkers working with the Akashic Records. So Terry is a spiritual channeler with 30 years of experience connecting people with guides, ascended masters, higher dimensional beings. Her practice involves deep trance channeling where she connects with angelic sources and ascended masters, providing practical down to earth advice, helping clients align with soul purpose and joy. Now, she's created an online platform called Shine.online, uh, which promotes lightworkers and holistic practitioners to share their gifts with the world. And she does offer private channeling sessions via Zoom and is currently working on a book featuring insights from her channeled sessions. And you can connect with, uh, there's a link going to a link tree to connect with Terry with this podcast. So hi, Terry. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for connecting with me. Nice to connect with you again. Oh, nice to connect with you. Now, you've, you've been doing this for a long time. What got you into this, uh, this line of work? Uh, well, I, it, it was all, you know, uh, happenstance. Um, as a young child, I was claircognizant, uh, but we just didn't know what to do. My parents didn't know what to do with that uh, gift, so it kind of went dormant. But uh, in 1994, I was a marriage counselor, and out of the blue, I started hearing in my right ear guidance that I would use with the couples. And it would tell me where to go poke in the, in the counseling session. And uh, it was just, they were just stunned and amazed and we got to the root cause. And um, it was great for them because we resolved you know, deep issues within just a few sessions, but it was, it sucked for me because it didn't help me pay my rent. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it started with clear audience and um, clear audience. And that actually, that gift actually saved my life uh, in a possible car accident uh, a few years later. So it, it, became something that I really cherished, but I couldn't necessarily control it. And then in 2004, I had an experience where I was with a friend stepping onto um, a very old homestead farm property. And I saw the, um, the original, uh, original creators of that farm, the builders of that farm, they weren't happy to see us there. But my friend realized that I could see this so later on, uh, he had a friend that um, was in grief and his children were seeing green lights in uh, their rooms. And he said, please come and help them. And I just thought, I don't know what I can do. Their mom had recently passed away from suicide and the whole family was grieving. Um, and so I, I went there, I connected, and that's where I discovered I had the ability for a deep trance. She came through me. Luckily, I was with um, my mom who works, uh, who channels and works in crossing souls over. And I had a bit of a hard time getting rid of her. So she was a wonderful mentor because she taught me how to properly protect my channel and make sure that, um, you know, good light sources came. And so I worked on that for a while um, and I chose not to do Departed Souls anymore, but what came to me was an angelic source named Ajada. And with my friend who got me into channeling, we started, um, I just started channeling information and knowledge and guidance. And the next thing I knew, word of mouth took over and I started channeling for people um, all over the US and Canada. Uh, just through word of mouth. And it was there that I really honed in on the fact that, you know, my mission as a marriage counselor has always been to help people and in a very concrete way, find joy. And the information that I channeled was also aligned to helping people remove blockages or um, uh, issues that was preventing them from really living their purpose and their joy and it just expanded from there wonderful now are you still working with the same uh, angelic source or are you connecting with other beings as well or yes of... so i it it were it started off with a jada the angelic source and then uh, i tapped into an ascended master because 
um, my friend really wanted me to connect to healing information. And so uh, this Ascendant Master named Emmett uh, is working with Edgar Casey on the other side. And uh, so it's, uh, he's getting coaching on the other side. I didn't realize Edgar Casey was training souls to, uh, and spirits and Ascended Masters to come in to be channeled sources to help with healing. Uh, so he's trying to multiply his, his uh, power, his gift on the other side. Uh, and then more recently, I started uh, channeling uh, Yeshua and an Arcturian source as well. So it's, it seems to be based on the questions that someone is asking, um, that the, the right source to answer them comes in. Brilliant. Now, I know before we, we started the chat, you, we were talking a little bit uh, about um, this particular focus, about light workers and the way they work in the Akashic Records. So we, we're going to see if that actually is what comes out. And um, is there anything you want to say about that before we go in? Um, I recently uh, channeled a source that was saying that they really want to speak to light workers because we need to adjust the what we used to be doing, you know, as light workers 10, 20 years ago was fine for that energy and that vibration of the time. But the we are entering a different period and we need to now adjust what we're doing, tweak what we're doing because of the ripple effects of what we're doing. So now we need to refine our approaches in all of our gifts and all of what we're doing to the changing energies. And I don't know what that means. I know that there's some exciting guidance coming down, um, you know, that that wishes to help like workers tweak their approach to healing and helping. So in the process, I, I didn't ask you before, is it, should I just see what happens or do I ask if there's a space to ask something? Yes, it should be space. Uh, generally, as in a deep trance, um, generally the sources that come in um, either wait, uh, will, will um, greet you and ask you maybe how they can help you. And then that opens the door for a question. Depending on the source, they could be very um, short and direct in answering your question or it can just trigger a very long monologue and <laughs> and not leave room for any other questions. So it, it truly depends on who comes in. And um, I just basically ask for um, the highest source to come in to answer your questions today. And so usually it's a match, but sometimes as you start answering your question, uh, they will switch. A different source will come in to better answer your questions. Amazing. Well, um, I think off we jolly will go into the connecting. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Off we jolly will go. Okay, excellent. All right, so um, I will just start with clearing some space. I create sacred space here in this room, in this environment, and in this home. I create sacred space in your space, in your room, and wherever you are located. And I create sacred space through this internet connection. I call in my archangel angelic team. Come be with me now to hold sacred space in this home in this room. I call in my Archangel, Archangelic team to come hold space. Hello, dear one. Thank you for coming. It is our pleasure and our honor to connect 
with you today. We honor your light and your divine source. We honor your archangelic source. Dear one, we are here to speak with you today and ask that you ask a question that you wish to ask. Yes. Well, I came to this call and the intention was looking at um, different ways of accessing the Akashic Records in terms of how the times are changing and how we need to change our approach to the Akashic Records. So I work personally with the Akashic Records in different ways. And um, is there anything generally you could say about this subject for the general audience first about the changing times and accessing the records? Yes. Terry is correct in the guidance that we wish to provide to you today. There is so much we wish to share about this topic for lightworkers. We wish you to understand that when you work in the Akashic Records with your clients, that it is a deeply sacred space, a deeply honored space that the angelic realm and source considers truly sacred. We wish you to understand that going into this space has, and modifying Akashic Records, has a profound ripple effect on the entire planet. It has a profound ripple effect, six layers deep, in the fact that you are not only changing the impact of the person you are working with in terms of clearing trauma from their Akashic records, but the direct people involved in this event, the direct people involved in this person's life on a daily basis, which are not connected to this event, the friends and family and their friends and family six layers deep this has a very profound ripple effect and so working on clearing trauma from akashic records needs to be mm, worked in context of a sacred space. Mm. When working with this energy of Akashic Records, mm, mm, if sacred space is not created around that record, the ripple effect may be felt as a tsunami of energetic mm, waves, six ripples deep. You are impacting people very mm, mm, strikingly. And so we wish to smooth out these ripples on mm, these layers mm, because currently the energy of the planet is tumultuous. It is mm, 
like an ocean with mm, large waves and it mm, makes it a rough ride for some people and so we wish to help smooth this ride for light workers and for those mm, who are seeking the help of light workers and therefore mm, the six ripples deep of people that are being impacted by this work and so all of this is if all of this is softened mm, the transitions that we are entering in will be softer and mm, less turbulent mm, more in a state of ease and joy and so as the vibrations increase on the planet people's energy is more aligned and can ride the waves in a softer and gentler transition and so there are not so many um, crises or drama that may appear in their life it becomes much smoother and so our message is really about sensitizing light workers to the impact of working on trauma in the akashic records with your clients mm. before we go on to a technique does this make sense yes yes softer and softening sounds great uh, in terms of that there's the sacred space that can actually really hold it is there also a question of the amount of work that's done at one time yes 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 and so <clears throat> There are two messages we wish to convey about how light workers work with releasing trauma from the Akashic records. And so it is very, very important, first and foremost, to when working in this space, to call the Council of Light to hold space around the Akashic records. They are the holders. If they are not called, the changes you make will not stick. And so it is important to involve them. It is not, Akashic records are not just a book or a piece of paper. They are mm, energetic, vibratory mm, mm, records mm, that mm, cut through this time-space continuum of, of multi-dimensions. And so always call in the Council of Light to hold space. Also call in the Archangels that are mm, working with the Akashic Records and you to create mm, a sacred bridge to the Akashic Records, have these Archangels hold space. And we are not giving names of Archangels because the right Archangels for the bridge to this particular issue may change. And so simply call upon the Archangels who are overseeing and work with the Akashic Records and either yourself or your client to create a sacred bridge to the records. Visualize mm, mm, candles. It seems simple, but we wish four candles, one in the each space around mm, the what you visualize as an altar to the Akashic records. These candles will act as a pillar of light again holding sacred space for there we wish you to understand that you never rip from an akashic record book because the rip leaves a remnant a root which will recreate itself and so the technique we wish you to use is never to rip from a book because again it will not stick also, it is a violent tear in your energy field. Instead, what we recommend that you do is 
mm. see the Akashic Record book for that person or yourself simply dissolve into a stack of paper without a binding and you flip to the page that is addressed to mm, the situation you wish to clear and what we wish you to do is visualize the writing of that event in the page and see it evaporate the page stays there because you are not ripping out your existence you are rewriting the story of that moment and so visualize the ink mm, uh, like molecules or bubbles lifting up and going to source to be transmuted to love and light bring in healing and bring in light visualize the light of god clearing the energy of this page clearing with love and light and so that it is a blank slate that page remains it is the writing that is dissolved and now you rewrite with the new story on that page that is there because that is part of your existence do not remove the page rewrite the new story close the stack of paper back on top of it and then re put it re bind it into a book format mm. it was okay in the past to do this but to do ripping and burning and so forth. But now the energy of the planet is changing. Our vibration is increasing. The planet and earth and humans, their vibration is healing and changing and raising. And so it is now important to take a softer and more advanced, delicate, sophisticated approach to growth and moving forward. It is important now to modify the techniques that used to work in the old energy, but now are no longer coherent with the new energy that is rising. And so lightworkers in this instance and others will now need to refine the techniques moving forward to align to the energy that is coming and that is coming and taking place now within us. And the light workers are the beam, the mm, lead by example. They are the, the, the ones who will bring the rest of the planet and help the rest of the planet move into this new energy. And so it is important, and this is why we wish to, to communicate with you today, to tweak, to what you did was not wrong, but it was aligned to mm, the energy of that time. Now it is time to refine to more sophisticated mm, techniques to better align. Does this make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Thank you. Softer is always good. Softer is always good. And in terms of frequency, to answer your other question, we mm, wish to clarify that because this has a ripple effect on so many people, although the person receiving the healing may be completely ready and this may not have a big impact on them, others in their sphere mm, may not be as ready. And so that what may start off as a very gentle wave to the, to the person or the recipient of this mm, healing may the wave may increase and increase as it reaches further out in these six layers of connection six degrees of connection if you will and so it is important to not do this too frequently and so this is not a daily event we recommend no more than once a month and in fact, ideally for large releasing of events, no more than once every six months, but you can combine events in that opening. And so you can clear multiple events in that one sitting. 
instead of doing daily events of single events, you can combine them and do that clearing at one time. And holding the space with the light council and with the archangels will help anchor that change and make it smoother. But you have mentioned smoother, and so we will provide you more guidance along those lines, especially for the ripple effects, because as more and more people are um, becoming clearer on the ability to clear Akashic records, it has become more popular, and therefore more people are doing this, and with six layers and six layers and six layers, it, it really impacts a very large proportion of the population. And so it is important to understand that um, when you go into sacred space to clear these Akashic um, memories or traumas or events, um, that you call in um, the archangels. Um, please work with archangels to soften all the impact of the work that will be done um, today as you enter um, the Akashic Records. You ask that the archangels um, who are working with um, the Akashic Records and each of the individuals in this six degree sphere mm, be activated and you request that they help to smooth to soften the impact of the work that will be done on each of the individuals up to six degrees mm, from that are impacted from this event and so mm, mm, the the request the trigger the Mm, is is sent out and before the work is done before the work is done and so mm, mm, you can see it as a string of light going to each individual that will be impacted mm, mm, from the person requesting the healing to the person involved in the, the persons involved in the event to the family, to the family and friends, to their family and friends, and so forth. There are strings of light and there are archangels that are mitigating the impacts of the work that is being done in that moment, requesting that the work, that the impact of this work is minimized and softened with joy and ease and love for the highest good of all of those involved mm. beautiful yeah i think that's a great uh, idea in terms of um letting people know before we go into the records is it worth if we are doing it for ourselves um is it worth meditating and letting all the people know that will be touched that this is the work that will be happening and then calling on archangels to soften well before we for our own records this is beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. And so doing this on an energetic level and is a wonderful idea. Yes, yes. And this will soften the impact. And if more and more people do this, the rockiness of these times will start to settle because it has a ripple effect through the time and space fabric. And so it is a deeply profound mm, activity, event, healing that you are doing. And so mm, this kind of preparation, this kind of honor, this kind of sacredness to this clearing is mm, very important to just mm, help ease into joy and love because the transitions need not be tumultuous. The transition to a new energy can be soft and loving and joyful. And so this is one way 
that light workers can help to soften the waves that are we are witnessing happening right now. Beautiful. One thing that uh, many uh, star seeds light workers are concerned about is, I suppose, uh, aligning with their highest timeline and clearing anything in the akashic that's pulling them onto another timeline. Can you say something about that timelines in the akashic? Yes. Hmm. We can interpret your question in more than one way. Can you clarify what you mean by, hmm, can you provide us more specific in terms of the intention of your question? Yeah. So, um, of course, there are choices and probabilities for our future. And uh, there are energies in our past, in the Akashic Records, that can keep us on a trajectory that is not particularly high. And so uh, in, in clearing, some, often the intention is to align with a higher choice, a higher possibility, a higher probability, so that we step usually in terms of into more joy, more love, more ease and grace. So that's often the intention by maybe pulling out too quickly or anything in the way, um, you know, anything pulling any ancestral pulls any other lifetime stuff coming in that's kind of keeping us from really moving forward effectively mm. this is a beautiful question and one we are grateful you have asked and so hmm. we wish to provide you hmm, with a slight paradigm shift Mm. in that is it necessary to view your past as aligning you with an unsavory future the past has led you to who you are now and so mm, it might be wise instead of removing past experiences to simply heal them and by providing love and light and release to these past experiences that allows you to grow and open up a new door without removing past timelines but simply providing love and light and so another technique that can be done is simply to unbind the book visualize the stack of paper to some of these experiences and bring the light and love and compassion of God and source to this event, the unconditional light and love to this event, to heal it and not to remove it, but to heal it. And so you see the light grow, glowing white and just mm, levitating surrounded with light and love and you can see a bubble an energetic bubble of just mm, healing source light and releasing the trauma without mm, rewriting anything but releasing the trauma and then mm, put it back and visualize, put the stack back of your life and visualize empty pages. The empty pages are the future timeline you wish to write. And open up the stack to your next page and visualize upon it either mm, a visual portrait 
of what you wish or a list and bring it light, bring it love, again, with the surrounding of the light council, with your can candles lit for the beams of light and with the archangel working with you, mm, you rewrite your future in your book. This is all done gently and lovingly. Mm. And then add the next page that you wish for the next step after that. And then the next page, up to three pages to rewrite your future. And so you honor your past, you honor your timelines mm, because they have created you in the here and now. They have created the person who is awake enough to ask for mm, healing and to ask for a brighter future. And so it is important in many ways to honor what has come behind you. And instead of ripping and tearing, you heal and you bring light and you release the people, the karmic energy, the trauma, the emotional pain that is in the DNA, that is in the spirit, caught in spirit, caught in organs of the body, you release that and that light energy of that page and the light of love, God, source, love and healing will help mm. <sighs> make that a thing of the past. And just that exercise <sighs> takes away the shackles or blocks or mm, stickiness that is holding us back from experiencing our true timeline, our true intended source. And so mm, we recommend that something as gentle as this, because energies are now becoming very sensitive. Light workers are now connecting mm, with greater empathy and energy their senses are becoming mm, even more attuned to things they never knew was possible. And so gentleness in mm, working with past, mm, past lives, whether past lives mm, from a soul level or even a DNA level mm, is very important to clear gently, gently. And so techniques such as this will mm, ease the waters and create this beautiful light filled mm, lake instead of a turbulous mm, stormy ocean mm, as we transition. Does this make sense? That's very beautiful. Yes, it does. Totally. Thank you so much for this gentler, softer approach for the classic records. It's very beautiful. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people. It was our deep honor to speak with you today. And mm, on a personal note, we wish to express our gratitude for mm, the courage that you have to honor your life purpose and mm, wish to mm, give you the personal message that your ripple effect on the planet, your light effect on the planet reaches far beyond those who have direct or indirect contact with you through video or mm, mm, personal or mm, group sessions mm, like the Akashic Records 
the ripple impact that you have is 30 fold beyond the persons you help. And mm, you are a perf powerful light worker and mm, your journey has not always been easy. And so mm, taking a gentler approach will also ripple in your life. Mm, taking uh, an approach of honor and reverence to the Akashic Record will smooth things out mm, and create mm, a beautiful vortex mm, around you of protection, of calm, of joy, mm, and mm, mm, keep at bay any energies seeking drama because you will have created a calmer ripple that will not attract turbulent energies. And so mm, our message to you is one of gratitude for your courage to continue mm, expressing your life purpose. Mm, and we wish to thank and honor you for doing so.